This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Just admiring how gorgeous it is. Been getting rain every day for six days. The frogs are singing, the plants are singing. Everything looks beautiful and lush, like Florida should. <clears throat> so we're a biodynamic rare tropical fruit farm and I grow a lot of other plants. Been here for six years, almost seven years. In November, it'll be seven years. Uh, I grow these, a lot of orchids and like trees and stuff because you can take these orchids that you buy at like Home Depot and stuff, those little soilless ones in the bag and just put them in the trees. And eventually they grow. You don't have to water them. You don't have to fertilize them. Eventually they grow up and they start blooming continuously. It's kind of the miracle of Florida. It's just a biologically active area that if allowed can grow plants naturally and fruit them. And we grow all our plants with using biodynamic compost. We have to use compost that we make here on the farm. It's a mix of bokashi fruit from the farm and rinds and stuff, and uh, zebu manure, donkey manure, pine shavings, and uh, hay, and pea probably. Stuff I clean out from the barn. Same stuff I drop off every day I use for my compost pile and then put biodynamic preps in it, compost preps. So just admiring these, my house plants. So there's, amazing interest uh, in this farm for sale and I think I can see the right person um, here they have a couple kids they've been here already they're very young didn't know a lot about growing plants um, which is a plus in my book because you really don't need to know a lot and a lot of the stuff that people do are just bad habits that are destroying Florida and so if you're one of those people that has to use your water soluble fertilizers this probably isn't your channel and please don't even waste your time commenting about how you can grow better than me with your super thrive 15 15 15 because I'll just hide your comments and <laughs> I don't have to deal with it so <laughs> just save your time because I don't want to hear it this is about this isn't about you this is about taking care of Florida and um, doing what's right and it's so easy and it's obviously it's a better way if I can grow and fruit all these fruit trees without watering them. These things are getting huge. Um, these variegated uh, plants, I'm going to start. So I guess, um, I don't know, I haven't talked about the house plants in the sale of the farm because I could probably do cuttings of them because I think that would be a good um, cash crop. Um, but I got to take my plants, these house plants with me, but I can do cuttings of them, uh, started cuttings and you got to kind of grow them. Here. They're fast growing, so it's not like it would be hard. I mean, I took, took a, couple years to put that collection together so I'm not just gonna I can move that so I'm gonna bring it with me <laughs> yeah. so kind of the centerpiece of our system is the uh, the weedy orchard floor the undisturbed weedy orchard floor it's been proven recently by the US Department of Agriculture studies that undisturbed soils
can deal with the effects of climate change and environmental stressors like drought and flood and heat better than disturbed soils. So we don't walk on anything. That's one of the big things. Uh, it's like the centerpiece of our philosophy here is undisturbed soils. So we even, we just so we don't walk on anything and um, only go into the system to pick fruit or plant or drop off a load of compost or manure once a year. I only apply compost once a year to the entire farm and I do it in very tiny amounts. You have to do it to be certified organic you have or biodynamic um, yeah we're certified organic at the moment but I'm not going to continue that I'm going to continue with the biodynamic so look at these mushrooms that grow in our system I mean they are just this is why they come up in my my compost they're just amazing what are these mushrooms Oh, they look like they're good mushrooms. Um, there's different types that grow in here. So anyway, the the undisturbed, back to the undisturbed, I got sidetracked looking at mushrooms. Um, <laughs> uh, the undisturbed compost. The whole problem, I think, with the compost is it's a highly disturbed uh, carbon source that uh, they, say they're going to use for fertility but they kill off all the a lot of this stuff with their thermophilic turning um speedy heat treated compost so i believe in tiny low piles so close to the ground and in like a small area and so have wild space in between the compost. I like weeds in my compost. Once the weeds are in there, you know that the, uh, the compost is ready. <clears throat> you know, plant roots excrete uh, plant beneficial uh, compounds into the soil. So when you break them up, that's what you kind of what you want. So look at all these freaking mushrooms. I mean, that's just like big, huge portobello mushrooms are everywhere. Um, and little tiny orange ones. See the little orange ones? I'm just. This is an old compost pile. I need to put some manure down here. So um, it's just. I don't know. Florida is so amazing. Nobody talks about the the fungi in Florida, and um, we kind of like been building a system. Those, I believe, are edible mushrooms. Um, uh, building a fungally dominant system by not disturbing it and applying inputs that are small amounts of nitrogen that are low in nitrogen. So maximum available nitrogen is 5% from like compost or cow manure. So sure it gets higher uh, nitrogen from the birds, but it's random throughout the farm. <clears throat> I'm not applying like 7% nitrogen source like earthworm casting. I don't need to apply earthworm castings because if you apply manures, the earthworms show up. <clears throat> Cow manure, that's what we do. Zebu manure, our holistically grown zebus. So yeah, I don't turn the compost and um, it takes about, I don't know, I'll show you my current compost pile. It's two and a half years old. And it's so what we start all the uh, all the uh, aeroids in, and you know tropical fruit seeds that I start in pots, rare ones like cacao and stuff I may purchase that have a limited amount. So this is the old 
This is where I'm getting my compost. This is two and a half years old. See all the weeds in there? That's what we want. I learned that technique from, it's like a inspired by Indian natural farming. Um, I forget the recipe, I'm sorry, India, but it's some, uh, it's some recipe they have where they do this, some compost and then they grow seeds in it and then they chop it, chop it all up, mix it all up. They leave the compost there, but after the seeds get a certain height, they uh, chop them into the compost and then they let it sit some more. But I kind of just let the weeds show up on their own. I don't plant seeds in there. They just, they show up here. Uh, and uh, once, once that happens, the compost is ready. You gotta look at where, People remove all this orchard floor stuff from the ground, you know, get rid of all this stuff. But, I mean, look at the mushrooms that grow in this. These things are everywhere. I really like the heliconia, I knew that. So if you have fruiting bodies of mushrooms, you definitely have all the other mushrooms, the, the uh, mushrooms that grow inside the plants. <clears throat> when you don't have any mushrooms that you that you should worry probably because of the nitrogen you have too much nitrogen in your system would be my guess the salt-based fertilizers um, don't don't work well with fungi or fungi don't work well when you're using salt-based fertilizers so this koi muck tree has got I checked the fruit on it yesterday there's a lot of fruit. There's like at least 30. 30 fruit. See them? They're big. Oh, it's my favorite fruit in the world. See all the fruit? You can see them. That one was getting brown on the end of it. It was sitting on a leaf. And um, I thought I'd pick it, but it seemed okay. It looked like it was just... Uh, um, just brown from the leaf. But there's so much fruit in here, you can really see it um, now. I don't, can't believe I didn't see it before, but uh, where is it? There you are. No? It's like 30 fruits. I'm so excited about this. So this, this, these koi muck trees, they produce like, I don't know, like, uh, thousands of pounds of fruit per year once they're mature and it obviously is amping up quick um, this, this is a grafted tree from Excalibur their trees kind of stay small the Excalibur trees but all a lot of these fruits you know we're gonna all the seeds we're gonna plant here I will sell a small amount of them but I am buying all the seeds to replant here and then you could graft budwood onto the you know from this tree and have a fruiting tree probably in three years easily a uh, very expensive fruit in demand uh, i mean they've been growing this here since i think 1924 but you don't hear a lot of people have them we have two types fruiting trees our seed grown tree did not fruit this year well it fruited but it didn't hold the fruit it did last year all these people that spray their trees with copper and uh, other stuff. The, the trees is the home for the lizards and bugs, right? Um, I just don't understand people that just only look at their own, what they think their own needs are. don't think like that I guess look at this jackfruit I'm gonna look at the barn because I think whoever buys this place is gonna they're gonna want to farm it up so open it for business and probably you could do it right away right into our cow barn because I am bringing my zebus with me like my house plants sure if I have a baby or two I could probably uh, arrange for you to get get to, but um, I could also 
turn you on to the guy where I got mine, Rick Bogle, and uh, his cows and, and bulls are just super sweet. Yeah. I'm just surprised that people have issues with mean zebu because that's not been my, my experience with cow, cow raised uh, zebu. Uh, it's not quite ready. People want the zebu, I'm glad. Um, they want to know, I was the same way. I wanted to know if I could milk my zebus, but, but people fail to explain is that the zebus to this, uh, ingavira, I'm not so excited about it because ingavira is not a very good, uh, ice cream bean and I've had not very good ice cream beans and they're not any good. <laughs> That's why they're not very good, but we have better ice cream beans, Spectabilis and Fuilii and Cinnamonia that are big, so... I'm not gonna be so anxious for this one to uh, give me fruit. So the zebus, uh, they want to know if they can milk them because they have the, you know, the same goat or milk as goats, the A2 protein uh, milk. But nobody t tells people that these are miniature zebu. They're not like the uh, full-size desi cow that they use for milking. Um, these are more, I don't know, I think they're more important as companion and to bring joy and fertility to your space. Look at all these freaking mushrooms that are here. I just, I'm just blown away by this mushroom, mushroom madness around here. all that carbon it's capturing all that carbon in the soil from the plants that suffered drought damage I don't know I, I think that we've so screwed up our soils with our ignorant ways of farming you know completely uh, destroying mass amounts of acreage and putting um, putting control systems in and thinking we can regenerate that way um, without having any natural space. I'm kind of eccentric in my thoughts on this. I think two-thirds of your property needs to be de dedicated to wild space. Evenly distributed. So farm wild, farm wild, intermingled like this. It's easy with a uh, uh, perennial fruit trees because the orchard floor is that space. Even though you walk on it sometimes, it's still a wild space if you're not removing stuff and you're not planting a monocrop in there or maintaining a monocrop like a lawn or mulching it all out with wood chips. I believe in wood chips. What do you think these are? I apply them every single day. Don't get all upset because I say that about wood chips. I just don't have five foot high piles everywhere of just wood chips. <clears throat> I add a small amount that the system can break down easily throughout the year. Uh, I supplied in small amounts daily. Well, it's kind of common sense, most of this stuff. And that's why I think somebody that's young that doesn't have a lot of growing experience is the perfect thing with kids. I think kids probably know where to plant stuff better than adults who are further away from nature. I know as a child, I was always given the seeds by my mom and told to go out and plant the vegetable garden. I mean, from a young age, young. And that's what I did until I left home every year. Um, so, I know that kids are capable uh, to grow probably better than adults and people that don't. I, I think the person I know that has exceptional growing skills um, didn't know anything. And they reached out to me because what they were doing looked like this. I think it comes naturally to people. Um, it would have to, because there's, 
everything is so unnatural about our colonial farming systems. It's just unnatural. So in this pasture, that would be a great place to add parking. Uh, you can drive behind the barn from the road, but you know, some gravel put in there and a big parking space would be excellent. Um, there's also a pad in the back by the pond that they put when they dug the pond out 60 years ago. Um, uh, when they built this house and uh, so it's like raised up for uh, another house because you can build two houses on this property. So in this cow barn is what I think would be a perfect store um, to sell the produce and the plants. The house plants, the tropical fruit trees that you graft, and the seed grown trees that you grow, and the seeds. Um, and just move your zebu over to this little barn. Or move the zebu into the back. You could build a small shed for them inexpensively um, and put in the back pastures. And I'm sure whoever buys this is going to have zebu. They just, they work too well. Right, Midnight? You little darling. That's our bowl, the black one. And that's my little dream girl, Pepsi, in the back. Vogel Farms Uma. That's Carnation. Hi, princess. She's the goddess carrier. She's turning gray. She turns white in the spring. Pepsi, come here. Come here, little girl. She's like 32 inches. He's 32 inches. They're full grown. And that's Luna back there. She's a beautiful girl also. Carnation stunning. Yep. They're gorgeous. People want them. I see why. They're 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 here to make paradise for humans and animals alike. I firmly believe that. So the zebu could be turned out in here to eat the grass. <clears throat> After everyone leaves, just open the gate. There's just so much grass here, even during the drought. I mean, look at this. It's like crazy. Huh? Fungi like to grow in grass. <clears throat> okay, what was I going to do? I could go look at that cashew to see if it's fruiting, but I don't think so. Um, maybe some garcinias. So I'm kind of excited to uh, get this to pass on to a younger person with a family because a young, smart person raised young, smart kids. <clears throat> so I guess uh, there's a house, you know, the next street over is 8th Street to the uh, south of us. And... There's a couple houses that have sold on 8th Street. One was a brand new, big, they're big houses, like 4,000 square feet. Um, ours is like 2,500 or something. It's perfect, um, all redone. Uh, the, the one sold for 2.7, like less than eight months ago. And then I noticed there's one, and it was on five acres, and then there's another one on 8th Street. I was on the 6300 block. In fact, you can see the house from here. Um, so it's right at the end of our driveway. It's across this huge field on 8th Street. Uh, yeah, there it is. That's a new house. That house sold for 2.7, 50 on five acres and uh, no farm. And then there's one uh, just up the road that was on the market, or is probably still on the market, 2.995 million on five acres. And it's sold for, or is it, it's pending, just went pending the other day for uh, 2.99999. <laughs> Scary. So, I mean, really, realistically, this property is priced. Uh, 
attractively. Because I know that the uh, super rich, like uh, the farm, the farm, uh, the farm around their community. So the community for your family or friends, you could build two, well, this is considered one of the houses, so you can build another house or you could tear this house down and build another one there. But why you would do that is beyond me. But um, you could, they wanted us to do that when we bought this, but we wanted this house, I liked it. It was the same year as me, so it's a nice house. We just redid it. Very expensive to do, but we did it. And um, so you could build two houses and two guest houses. So that's four living units, spaces on this property. You have to have five acres or, or you know, like four points, this is 9.77 acres. So one 4.77 acre lot and one five acre lot. Uh, you could build two, three more houses on it. So including this house, four houses. So those other houses that are uh, basically 3 million uh, on five acres, um, they, uh, they don't have guest houses and they have pools, of course, and but no screen on the pool. I'm sorry, you have to have a screen on your pool or you're breathing bug spray and your grandkids are breathing bug spray. And uh, we all know that bug spray damages brains and um, that's kind of the wrong direction to go. Uh, you either get it or you don't. My encephalardos are all coming up. You know, I intercropped encephalardos in here. That's encephalardos horridus. This is, uh, and I'm gonna try longus, longifolium or something like that. There's another encephalardos horridus. Yeah, so rich people, they like to have the uber rich, they like nature and um, organic food being grown around them. And what's better than an organic tropical fruit farm? Biodynamic tropical fruit farm, excuse me, I gotta start saying biodynamic. I can't believe somebody said that they were like, they fruited their achichiro from in three years. Impossible from seed, I, I don't care who you are. Please don't lie to me. <laughs> yes, a grafted tree is po totally possible, but not a seed-grown tree. <clears throat> Most achachiro out there are seed-grown. But we have budwood you could graft onto non-fruiting trees. And get all these achachiro that are this size fruiting. Quick. Guaranteed. They don't need water. We don't water anything. That's a big stressor that we don't have to worry about. I want to go look at my, look at these freaking mushrooms. Little tiny mushrooms growing under here. I don't know why that nobody talks about the fungi of Florida, because they're here. They try to destroy everything and try to fungicide everything, but there's going to be areas that are natural, um, areas hopefully. So this Philodendron Maximus, it's uh, got a new growth point right there. It's getting, I thought it had died, but it's, that's the leaf coming out. So, oh, thank God. <clears throat> Seems okay. The entire orchard floor is just covered in fungi. So those fungi were there during the drought, obviously. And uh, I'm positive that fungi control the water cycle. And they definitely control the, the water cycle, I'm sure, in a living system. Look at these.
Yeah, shut up about your uh, salt-based fertilizers. You can't grow fungi when you use those. So just please kindly read, read up on your regenerative farming before you come at me. Uh, citrus is looking good. There's a lot of citrus here. Look at all this fungi. All the white is fungi. So that little, uh, I showed this during the drought, this little kumquat tree. It looked horrible. It was super healthy, seed grown, no greening whatsoever. Um, Kumquat, this is a, you know, syzygium. Oh, what a difference rain makes. <laughs> Poor California. Oh. I couldn't imagine having to breathe that smoke all the time. I know the wind changes, but a lot of times it's coming at you. Some super rare stuff. I have a very good local connection, somebody that grows organically, uh, that has like every type of random medicinal plant and tree you could think of. So uh, whoever bought this place, um, if you want, needed to buy nursery stock, because a lot of these nurseries, they buy their stock. So I imagine, well, I heard that mangoes you can't get right now, or they're hard to get. But um, you have all the seeds, you can graft your own mango trees. It's not that hard. There's a lot of people that graft trees. <clears throat> it's pretty easy. There's a lot of people in Florida that do it. So you could find somebody to do it for you easily. Um, I could hook you up with somebody that has all this stuff. Be a little complicated trying to sell it as biodynamic, but um, you could probably influence them into going biodynamic. Um, they have Zebu and they are organic, so I'm sure if uh, it was beneficial to them that they would do it. The Ingus spectabilis supposed to be the best one ice cream bean we should be getting ice cream bean fruit soon oh this uh garcinia garden uh hombroni on it is uh flower or not flowering but uh leafing out so i've seen this flower during random times so i imagine it's gonna try to flower but this is a this is a male tree so I don't expect it ever to get any fruit on it. Look at, in the ginger, all the mushrooms in there. See all that? I've been very, uh, very uh, diligent in getting companion plants that um, fungi are known to uh, form relationships with, waxy leaf plants and trees. This is an MB tree, I think it's a female. It had like 10 fruit on it this year. I don't think it's a hermaphrodite tree, but it could be because I bought two, two uh, MBs when I got my hermaphrodite tree. And why would one be a hermaphrodite and one not? But um, this one's not grafted. That's not a hermaphrodite MB tree. Jackfruit, mango, black sapote. 
I had some uh, some Atamoyas growing around here, but I don't see them. That doesn't mean they're not here. There's a little jackfruit growing at the base of this uh, inga tree. It's doing quite well, actually. I had some uh, intermediates growing at the base of this, but I don't see any of them. They s were started in the pot together. Um, it's okay. Got plenty of growing elsewhere, but the jackfruit looks healthy. That's a really good jackfruit from this farm. So what's nice about this farm is all these trees that they're fruiting now, and so you get you don't have to buy seeds. You just can grow it and grow it and grow it without costing any money, or grow nursery stock to sell. They're all like. Japanese sweet potatoes. You could put them all in, they'd be a crop by next, uh, I did this whole area, all the, the the lawn in Japanese sweet potatoes. I never dug them up, <laughs> but I still spread them around. I just don't do the whole lawn, but you could do the whole lawn, there's enough slips. It's that Inga cinnamoniae. Pigeon peas. And now you can sell pigeon pea trees. I, 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 I don't understand why anybody would buy one, but, but uh, people are willing to buy plants. I'm a, kind of a seed person myself. Plants for food anyway, especially men, they like plants for food. Here's a good size, uh, Garcinia humilis, the chachiro. This is like from the drought stress. It was really hot too, so that could have had something to do with it, but it's fine. It's pretty big, it's getting pretty big. Different citrus and stuff planted along here. It's one of our little Miko lemons. Anyway, this is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I hope you have a beautiful day.